This video will explain a new technique for training GANs with limited data sets by using data augmentation, developed by researchers at NVIDIA. GANs are a really exciting type of generative model that can produce new data points from a given set of examples. If you give GANs a data set of faces, it can generalize to produce a new face image that wasn't in the original set. Like many areas of deep learning, this requires big data sets to work well. This paper looks at how we can train GANs with as little as a thousand images. This technique also doubles the quality of generated CIFAR-10 images, a very popular academic data set of 50,000 images across categories like frogs, cats, or airplanes. This is done by introducing a new way to set up data augmentation, introduce it into the GAN framework, and use heuristics to automatically test for overfitting in the discriminator and adjust the magnitude of the data augmentations accordingly throughout training. This video will present a new technique for training GANs with limited data from researchers at NVIDIA. Similar to any classifier with a lot of parameters and not enough data, our discriminator is going to overfit to the small set of available training data. So in the Generative Adversarial Network Framework, we have the generator that learns to produce data and the discriminator classifier that's predicting whether the data came from the generator or the original training set. So these charts show the examples of discriminator overfitting. Our discriminator is overfitting to the small set of real training data so much that it's classifying the generated samples in the same way as a held out real data validation set. This is another interesting thing that I don't see a lot in GAN research is comparing what the discriminator is classifying with the original training set that it's using to uh, do the apples to apples comparison with generated samples compared to a held out real data validation set. So you can see from these plots that the discriminator overfits the real training set and then starts classifying the uh, generated examples and the validation sets as the same uh, not real uh, marker indicating that it just has learned these high frequency features of the real data and isn't learning semantic features of the original data distribution. One of the most common ways to avoid overfitting in image classification and computer vision is to introduce label preserving transformations in the form of data augmentation. So this includes things like rotations or shifting the blue color histogram. Say we have a cat versus dog classification task. By rotating the dog's face 30 degrees or 15 degrees, that doesn't change the label of the dog and make it suddenly a cat, but adding these slight transformations to the image really uh, help prevent the discriminator from overfitting or the classifier from overfitting on the small data set. So we wanna apply data augmentation to training GANs. And there's a lot of research that's looking into how we're gonna do this, whether it's with consistency regularization or contrastive loss or the dynamic method presented in this paper. So this idea of leaking augmentations in GANs is one of the most common ways is to apply augmentation on the real training examples that go to the discriminator. So you might rotate the image or shift the blue color histogram or something like that. But the problem now is that the generator can no longer tell if these augmentations are a part of the natural distribution or not. So the generator is gonna produce these augmentations with the data that it's generating. So here's a great example of these leaking augmentations in GANs, explored in this paper, Image Augmentations for GAN Training. One common data augmentation technique is similar to drop out in the input space. This is called cutout, where we just crop out a section of the uh, image, and then we want the classifier to still be able to classify this as, say, fish, uh, truck, car, even though it has this black patch in the image. But if we do this black patching to the discriminated real images, the generator thinks that having this black rectangle is a part of the original data distribution. So the generator is gonna start producing these images with the black square in them. So the first idea in the paper is to design data augmentation strategies that we can introduce to regularize the discriminator that don't leak into the generated distribution. So one example of this is invertible transformations to avoid augmentations leaking. And this isn't invertible in the sense of normalizing flows. This is invertible describing the sense that you can invert the original data distribution from the set of transformations. So a good example of this is to describe two different uh, ways of applying augmentation, one which would be invertible and not cause leaking, and one which would not be invertible and would cause this augmentation leaking. So let's say we apply this rotation to the image. We're gonna, at uniform probability, meaning that zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, are all selected with the same probability to rotate the image. So now the generator is gonna have no idea that zero degrees of rotation is the correct orientation. So because these are all selected with uniform probability, the generator is going to produce images that are rotated 90, 180, and 270 degrees as well, because it thinks that that's what the uh, distribution of data is. So the idea behind an invertible transformation would be to apply more probability mass on zero degrees in the rotation compared to 90, 180, and 270. 
And there's another study that shows that the GAN framework is really good at uncorrupting this kind of perturbation when you have this kind of signal that it can, uh, you know, undo the transformation because it isn't just uh, no signal in the design of the strategy. Inspired by the paper Rand Augment that explores all these different data augmentations to be used with image classification, they use 18 different transformations and they're gonna pipeline this so each of the 18 transformations are chained together with a probability of being applied. So the idea behind the invertible transformation is that the closer P gets to one, the probability of applying the augmentation, the harder it's gonna to be to uncorrupt the original data distribution. So we still wanna regularize the uh, discriminator by having some data augmentation, but if data augmentation is too strong, the generator won't be able to learn the real distribution and it will leak these augmentations like producing this all green image into the generated images. So these are some examples of the different images that are produced as you slide up the magnitude at which you're gonna be augmenting these images. So now that we've described our strategy for choosing augmentations and how we're gonna implement the magnitude of applying them, let's look at how we're gonna integrate them into the GAN training framework. So previous work on this is consistency regularization, which is still highly effective when the lack of data isn't too severe as found in this paper. So they're studying limited data in the settings of 2000 images, 5,000 and 10,000 up to 50,000 in the CIFAR 10 data set. Still finding the CIFAR 10 data set is a limited data setting that benefits enormously from these upgrades. But in the consistency regularization case, this still works pretty well. So the original idea is to take the original images in the real training set and make the discriminators logic predictions of real versus fake the same or consistent with the data augmented views of the same image. So you see how this is a zoomed in crop of this original cat image. And that produces the discriminator to be agnostic to these kind of rotations in the real training data set. But this was further improved by balancing this out by also applying the same augmentations to the generated images and forcing the discriminator to be consistent with both of these augmentations, hopefully pushing the discriminator to understand semantic features and be totally blind to these uh, slightly nuanced details like zooming it in or rotating it and avoiding the discriminator basing its real versus fake classification on high frequency uh, like rotation kind of features. And then they also introduce this uh, latent space consistency where they perturb the latent vector Z that is the input to the generator and they want the generator to be consistent with the images that it produces through these two perturbations and it wants the discriminator to be consistent with how it classifies these two different images. Now we'll introduce the new technique, stochastic discriminator augmentation presented in this paper, Gant training GANs with limited data, also known as discriminator goggles. So the idea now is that the discriminator is only gonna see augmented images both from the generator and from the discriminator. But again, this augmentation is parameterized by this P magnitude value that is gonna be controlling how strongly we're augmenting this, these images and making sure that you can still recover the original data distribution despite the strength and the probability masses on each of these augmentations. So the discriminator goggles, a quote from the paper, is that it's not clear that this would work if the discriminator never sees what the training images look like, it's not clear that it can guide the generator properly. So it's interesting that this strategy works at all because the discriminator itself doesn't really know the uh, real data distribution. It has to uncover it through these augmentations. So this is comparing this to our balanced consistency regularization technique where the discriminator is forced to do consistent predictions with the real image and then the augmented view of that same image with both the real training data set provided and the images produced by the generator. So the difference is now we're not viewing the original images at all, we're only viewing the augmented views of that image, and we're not using the second loss term of the consistency. The next strategy presented in the paper is a really interesting idea of having an adaptive control scheme of the P parameter of the augmentation. So they're gonna introduce two heuristics to detect for overfitting in the discriminator, and when this overfitting has been detected, they're gonna increase the magnitude of the augmentation and have this dynamic scheduling that is a result of these heuristics used to measure where the discriminator is currently at in the training. The authors introduced these two heuristics to detect when the discriminator has overfitted on the real limited training data set in the iterative cycle of updating the discriminator and then updating the generator. So they use this held out validation set of real data to probe for the overfitting in the first metric. So this is taking the expectation or the classifications of the training, the data that comes from the real limited data training set minus the validation data and then divided by the training data minus the generated data from the generator in the GAN framework. So the second heuristic is just detecting the sign of the D train, just doing an expectation of how many of these uh, images are being classified from the real training data set as uh, positive or real. So the idea behind the second metric is just 
Uh, if it's classifying the entire training data set as real, then it's, it most likely has overfitted to the training data set. So they use these two heuristics in order to adjust the P parameter. And by having these heuristics to provide some signal, they can have this automatic uh, curriculum of how they're scheduling the P magnitude throughout the training. These are the results of applying the adaptive discriminator augmentation technique presented in this paper on different limited data settings, met faces with 1,336 images, uh, these breast cancer histopathology images with 1,944, this dog image data set with 4,700 data uh, images, and then CIFAR 10. And they dramatically reduced the CIFAR 10 uh, Frechet inception distance metric, almost reducing it by half of the original score, which results in much better generated CIFAR 10 images. We can see that there's a pretty good quality for generating these images, even though they don't have many images to start out with. This table compares the new technique with previous techniques that try to train these models from scratch with limited data, like the progressive augmentation GAN or the Wasserstein GAN with the gradient penalty, or this latent vector consistency regularization metric or spectral normalization, and you see the difference between this performance compared to the new technique, the adaptive discriminator augmentation algorithm that's been presented in this paper. And you see the performance differences training from scratch compared to transfer learning, which we'll talk about in the next slide. And then you also see the performance on CIFAR 10 with a dramatic improvement going from 5.59 on conditional generation, which is where you're given the uh, label of the image you want to produce. So say you're doing unconditional generation, this requires giving the data, the generator the entire CIFAR 10 data set and expecting it to just produce images without the additional label information of produce a deer or produce a cat. And this additional conditioning dramatically improves the quality of the generated images. This plot shows the results comparing the adaptive discriminator augmentation technique with balanced consistency regularization and then stacking both techniques together, where I imagine you also provide the consistency loss on the real image as well to further structure the loss function. So you see the improvements that are achieved by adding this in certain settings like the Elsun cat with 1,000 images, 5,000 images, you see a little gain as well. And you see the overall difference in how the FID score is uh, getting lower with respect to adding more images. So you see as there's more images in the data set, uh, the generative model gets much better at producing a data distribution that matches the features of the original data set. You see going from 21 with 1,000 images to 3.81 with 140,000. Similarly, from 43 with one to 9.22 with 200,000 images. So this plot is useful just to get a quick sense of how much data you might need to produce interesting uh, data distributions by using the GAN framework and then particularly these techniques, which you also see a huge gain over the baseline. Not using these techniques is a five times higher uh, FID score, probably like random images that would produce such a high metric on this uh, FID. So another interesting visualization that comes out of this is the mean image. So this is a pretty interesting uh, way of looking at what the GAN, the generator uh, data distribution is, is by averaging out the mean image and then comparing it with the real distribution. So I thought it was pretty interesting to see the similarity between these two images. Another really promising solution to the limited data GAN problem is to use transfer learning. So the algorithm they explore here for transfer learning with GANs is the freeze discriminator algorithm. Freeze discriminator freezes the parameters of the first k layers of the discriminator and then only fine tunes the next k or you know the next n minus k layers. So by doing this, you can transfer the low level features that were learned on the larger data set like ImageNet or the uh, face images that are commonly used to train these style GANs. And then you can fine tune this onto these limited data settings like the met faces or the breast cancer images or the uh, dog images. So you see the performance difference comparing the transfer learning with this adaptive uh, discriminator augmentation. And you see that the transfer learning isn't too far off, scoring uh, 9.02 compared to 7.4 on this dog images data set. So the transfer learning option is really interesting as well. Definitely a really exciting area of opportunity for research into limited uh, data GAN generation and how we can leverage these pre-trained models to get better performance on limited data settings. Thanks for watching this overview of training GANs with limited data. I hope from this video you got a sense of this problem of discriminator overfitting, where we have this small training set such that the discriminator overfits to these high frequency features and can't even tell the generated distribution from a held out real data validation set. From this paper, they introduced this idea of augmentations that leak into what the generator produces and how to solve this by designing this uh, schedule of invertible transformations, applying this discriminator goggle strategy compared to the balanced consistency regularization that's previously been really successful with introducing data augmentation to the GAN framework. And then finally, these heuristics 
that are used to automatically schedule and tune the strength of the augmentations or this P hyperparameter. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.